So what's your background? What's your name, by the way? Yeah, uh, William. William, Mohammed. Nice to meet you, man. Hi, sorry, this part is a lot What's your uh, background? What, what do you believe in? I'm a biologist and I'm a skeptic. Oh, I like him. Did you do biology in university? Did you do biology? Subject. <laughs> well, we'll see. Did you do biology in university? Yeah. Well, we've tried some. And what, what did you find? What led you to it? Like, what made you want to do that? Fascination with life. Like in my case, I have a. That's it. That's the easy answer. Yes. Give me um, a reason why you were fascinated with life. Because it's very difficult to explain. Are you from Scotland yourself? Yes. Yes. So I am from Scotland. Uh, yes. Do you want to talk about something? No problem. I mean, <laughs> the camera. He's like already. Maybe, yes, I think it would be good because it's, it's always interesting speaking to someone with expertise. More or less. In a subject. It's a nice dog, yeah. He's very halal, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so, I want to... Yeah. You can hear yourself think. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so, William. Yeah. I want to ask you a question. Sure, go for it. What is your... What's your thesis of how we got here? Not as biological entities, mm. but I'm speaking about the bigger picture. What, what, how do you explain it? Or what, what's your understanding of it? It's not, it might not be as satisfying a conversation as you think it might be because yes. generally my answer is I don't know which leaves a lot of people like fuck that was a shit conversation <laughs> let me ask you, you a question me. Let, me, let me put forward a, a, a series of statements <laughs> and it will be very much straightforward statements Okay, I'm not going to and you tell me whether you agree or disagree I might not be able to do that. I don't. I don't like yes and no situations. No, life, yeah. life is very complicated. I don't know. It's nothing about life. I'm speaking about the bigger picture. Then we can go z zoom into life. Yeah. Just tell me whether you agree or disagree. Well, we'll see. All right. Proposition one. There is no doubt that there is existence. Something exists. Yeah. Okay. Something exists. You agree. Proposition two, that existence is divided into necessary and contingent. Now let me explain the terms, let me define sure. them. A necessary existence is something which exists without depending upon something else. A contingent existence is something which depends upon something else to exist. Moreover, if you take it out of existence, an impossibility will not occur. Mm. Do you agree with that? No. Okay, so explain why you don't agree with that. It's a presupposition that you can't prove or disprove. I believe it's possibly the easiest thing to prove. How would you do that? All right. There's two options. There's three things possibly that could exist. There are impossibilities which cannot exist, like a squared circle. Right. Can't exist. Agreed? You have contingent things, which are things which depend upon other things to exist, like me and you. You depend upon your parents, I depend upon my parents to exist. Sure. And there are things which don't depend upon anything to exist, necessary existence. Would you agree that this is a fine classification? No, we, we don't know. Uh, from my perspective, we don't know the origin of the universe. It's I haven't said nothing about the universe. Well, things that exist have to exist somewhere. No, no. Look, I've, in my statement so far, I've made zero mention of the universe. Mm. I haven't said nothing about the universe. Yeah? All right. So far, I have been speaking ontologically, okay? Which means I've been speaking abstractly. I've not been speaking cosmologically. I've not been making mention of... Uh, things of the universe, right? So, let me tell you why it's impossible for there to be only contingent existences. Tell me. If there was only contingent existences, we would not necessarily exist. Okay. Because it's impossible for there to be a series of dependent things. That's an impossibility. Who knows? Let me no. This is a mathematical thing, right? Like you know, you have mathematical sets, yeah, a set. You have if you have a series of things 
which are all dependent upon something else, you need something outside of that series which is independent in order to make those things uh, exist. Existence would not be possible without a necessary existence. Maybe so. No, no, it's, it's not maybe. This is yes or no. Because I'll tell you why. Well, for me, it's not. Well, because I don't believe ahead. it. I, I don't believe, like I say, it might not be. Might Give not me an go alternative. You, it might not go the way you think. Well, because I'm of the position that I don't believe in people knowing the truth. I think that reality is much more complex than we can understand. There's, su there's such things you can explore like different levels of spirituality, higher levels of awareness, altering your mind state with psychotropic chemicals, seeing different places and realms, which are talked about in many different belief systems, in fact, beings, other entities, other ways of living. These things are, I think, far more complex than we can distill into like one book. So that, that's my stance. I mean, we exist and that's, that's fine for me. Okay, no. These are all cosmological realities. Yes, I know. I know where you're. I know where you're going. I'm saying two plus two equals to me. Two plus two. Two plus two equals four. It's not a cosmological reality. It's something in the mind. It's an abstractation. It's an abstraction, if you like. Yeah. Well, I can say yes, and then we can continue, if you like. But no, is, is it not? I mean, can you prove? Can you prove it otherwise? Can you? Well, <laughs> well let, let's let's say let's accept it and let's see where you go with it. Well, I, I can tell you from as a matter of fact, okay, that no human being who's a philosopher from Aristotle, who wrote a book called The Metaphysics, up until Bertrand Russell, who died very recently, yeah, who attempted to say logic and mathematics were the same thing, can prove that mathematics, for example, is in the real world from a cosmological perspective. It's an existence. Mm. We, we agree that mathematics exists, but it's not a cosmological one. Going back to what I was saying, in the same way now, contingency and which is possibility possible existence means if you t it's possible for you to have worn another jacket today yes it's possible for that jacket to have been another jacket but you copied him <laughs> yeah yes but you've had to copy me no problem or maybe it's the opposite now here the point is i'm making is all i'm saying is that we can classify existent things into possible existence and necessary existence in other words, if you take this thing out of existence, nothing else would exist. That's a necessary existence. Okay. Uh, yeah, all right, perfect. Sure. You agree? More or less. No problem. But you see the, you see the logic in that? Maybe so. I'm not an expert in logic. <laughs> no problem. But no, you... no, the actual formalized logic. No, uh, I, I've not logic studied it. Logic is... It's necessary to study it to be able to talk about it effectively. So I'm not I an expert. I think, to be honest with you, it's overrated in a sense because you have different yeah. kinds of logic. You have predicate logic, you have propositional logic. Even if you do, um, what do you call it, computer science, you're going to do logic to some extent, right? Mm. It just requires you to put things together here. All I'm saying is, you cannot, this is my statement, you cannot have a series of dependent possible things. You, you have to have one thing outside of that series that allows all of those things to exist. Otherwise, it, what does it depend upon, right? Why can you not just say that something needed to create that also? Then, then that thing that needed to create it is the necessary existence, right? And it, it, can it not continue? You know, turtles all the way down? What, into, into infinity? So, into infinity in terms of number or in terms of quantity? Does it matter? Right, actual infinity or what kind of potential infinity? What kind of infinity are we talking about here? I don't know. Yeah, okay, so no problem. If you say it's infinity, if the series is an infinite series. Mm. First and foremost, it's impossible to have an infinite series. Is it? Yeah, the reason why is because if you have an infinite series and you have something added to it, it will contradict its infinite infinity, right? I don't know, I think a series, is an infinite number. A series is by its nature bound. By what? It's bound by the fact that it's a series. So if you put something into it, or if you take something out of it, it will contradict its infinity. But let's just say... Well, well, say well we can keep going, because it's boring. Yeah, yeah, right, right. So <laughs> there's a necessary existence. Yeah. Okay, sure. Okay, so everything depends upon this and it depends upon nothing. You can you can tell me that. Okay, no problem. Maybe so. Now, if we agree that there's a necessary existence which everything depends upon and it depends upon nothing, mm. can you have more than one necessary existence? I don't know. It's impossible to have more than one necessary existence because one of them will have to depend upon the other one. So by nature, there will only be one necessary existence. Correct? Okay. 
All right, so we talked about the fact that there must be, logically speaking, even on an ontological level, just using abstraction, mm. there must be a necessary existence which everything depends upon and it depends upon nothing. <coughs> it must be one. And it also must be unique. Do you know why it must be unique? Why? Because had it had something, for example, if it was a composite, if it was a configured entity of many different parts, then it would dep depend upon its parts for its existence. For example, like yourself, right? You are a human being, I'm a human being, I have many different limbs yeah, and parts. And without those limbs and parts, I couldn't exist. So in, in essence, I depend upon my parts to exist. At least physically. Right, so it must be something which is, doesn't have any parts. Right? But it's not I, a composite. I don't, I, don't, I don't even. The interesting thing is, I don't mind. Okay, no problem. You know problem. what I mean? All of this stuff it actually doesn't. It doesn't affect me. It doesn't affect me that much. No, it, it, it does affect you, and I'll tell you why. Ah, tell me why. Because if we accept all the premises that I put forward, mm. then in effect, what you've done. One more thing I'll say to you is right. That thing. If we agree with the fact that there is time, yes, there cannot be something which precedes it. Right? Okay. Because then it would, in effect, either be contingent on that thing, dependent on it, or it would depend. Uh, it, it would pr uh, be caused by it. If we believe in causation, obviously David Hume, you're Scottish, didn't believe in. He had some issues with causation, so I'm not even using that word right now. Right. Okay. So here, what you, I want to shake your hand. You said you're an agnostic. No, I didn't. A skeptic. Okay. So what do you believe? Do you believe in God? <laughs> it depends what you mean by God. I mean the necessary existent one, independent. <laughs> well, right. You're trying to put me into a position where I have to say yes. Well, no, but I don't I mean, mean to pin you to anything. It, I've just done. I've just. I've just done discursive so, e explication. So, ever, so I yeah. mean, it's it's yeah. your explanation that I would like. Um, yeah. So, what is God to you? God is all those things we talked about. Because in the okay. Quran it says, "Qul Allahu Ahad." Say He's God, one and only. Okay. So it's Allahu Samad, the one that everything depends upon, and He depends upon nothing. Right. He doesn't have any children, nor was he a child of anything, which shows that there was nothing that preceded him. Right. The completely unique. Right. So the things that we said are necessary for a God to be a God mm. are in the things that we've rationalized are in fact in place. Okay. So therefore, do you, does this make sense to you rationally? No, I know where you're going. Sure. Right. So it can't be, for example, a plethora of gods. Because they'll be, they'll be Probably not. Yeah, no, definitely not. But I mean, I, I don't necessarily agree with the star, so... Oh, we did agree with the star. We have to be honest here, uh, no, William. No, we don't. We, we don't, don't have to be honest? <laughs> God, sorry, sorry. No, no, no. We yeah. do, it's good to be honest, but right. it's hard to be honest when you don't know all the truths of the universe, which none of us do. We're not talking about the universe. Well, I am. Do you know why we're not talking about the universe? When I say that, I mean existence. Existence that we can comprehend, which is what we've been doing in discussion of right. logic, no. which is an existence. Let me explain right? to you something, right? This is an ontological argument. An ontological argument means just like mathematics, right? It's something which resides in the mental, abstracted realm. Mm. We can easily transfer it to the cosmological realm, easily, right? And it can be applicable in the cosmological realm but it can exist without a cosmological inference. Sure, an idea. Yes, an idea just like mathematics, but a real one, just like mathematics. Mm. Yeah, so having- just abstract mathematics. Like. Yeah, yeah. abstract mathematics is real, is it not? Mm, I'm not an expert, but I've, I've heard some interesting things about that. Right, For, no, no one will tell you that. I mean, you're not gonna tell me that maths is not real. No, that's not what I'm saying. Same thing is, because let me tell you something, right? Scienti the scientific method, yeah. you're a biologist. What is it based upon? You know. It's based on the philosophy of science. And the philosophy of science are metaphysical, non-tangible uh, principles of logic. Sure. And so they are abstractions. Cool. So the whole of science is based on abstractions. If, it wasn't, if abstractions were any less than cosmo cosmology, yeah. then surely they should be underpinned by it. Right. Well, the opposite is true. Okay, so let's keep going. So no, keep, so I'm just telling you going. the epistemic way of ontological reasoning can sometimes supersede that of cosmological reasoning. You're Scottish, obviously David Hume believed in the problem of induction. He talked about the swans and all these things, right? Right, I've never read Hume. You should, man, he's one of your main guys, yeah. you know? Yes, but he's actually the, probably the greatest Scottish philosopher of all time. And maybe I'm making a... <laughs> 
Yeah, whatever. Who, who knows? Maybe. Who knows? But what I'm saying is that there are problems. With, that science has inductive problems, right? Or limitations, I should say. Yeah, the inductive problem. So, h having said that, if we agree that there is an entity which is necessary, which everything exists upon, or which everything depends upon, which if you take it out of creation, nothing would exist, an impossibility would occur. That is one, and that nothing came before. If you do believe in time. Then what we should say there for is that you're no longer that much of a skeptic, are you? Because you've actually taken on board the religious notion. Well, oh, it really, God. it really depends, because we've yet we've yet to get into the specifics. All right, so are, these are, are in the really Quran, in the Quran, Quran, right? These are the four parameters in that chapter, right? That he is God, one and only, the eternally besought of all, meaning the independent. He has. He, he has no children, nor is he given any children, and there's nothing like him. is unique. Now, having said this, these are four parameters. That excludes Trinitarianism, because we have the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. It excludes it completely, because we said there cannot be more than one necessary existence. So, if it excludes Trinitarianism and polytheism by extension, we've gotten rid of two major religions in the world, which is Hinduism or one understanding of Hinduism, one understanding of it, mm. and Christianity, right? right? So we, we, we ask the question now, if this is more reasonable in, in an inference than the atheistic one, what does this a, a necessary existence want from us biological entities in the world? Is there a connection between? Question. Well, that's a very good question. Is there a connection between us and this necessary existence? Why would there be? Well, Is we there... know for a fact, we know from reason, discursive reasoning, that there must be at least one kind of ex uh, relationship. The fact that he gave us existence, or it gave us existence, yeah? If it gave us existence, if it gave us existence, then there is a relationship of giving existence. That's one thing. Yes? Okay. So that's definitely there. Could, it, could the, it be a natural force that gave existence by being a natural force? We're it's impossible applying, for we're it to be a consciousness to this entity and purpose. When we don't, I don't see a, a logical reason that it would have purpose to doing it. It could be a natural force. The natural forces we can observe. Maybe it's mirrored. It can't you know be. I mean? It cannot be material, and I'll tell you why. It cannot be natural. It must be immaterial. Well, it's made of something. Do you know? No, no, no. It's, it can't be. In fact, that's one so thing. Nothing. Logically, it cannot be a material entity. And I'll tell you why. Everything which is a material entity is a composite configuration. And as we discussed, a composite configuration is dependent upon its constituent parts. If something is dependent upon its constitu constituent parts to mm. exist, it must be dependent. And if it's dependent, it can't be necessary. Right. No, I understand what you're saying. Right. But perfect. I, I just like so to think deeper. Therefore, it cannot be material. I didn't necessarily say material. Uh, well, natural. Said a natural force. Well, what, what do we mean by natural? Well, like, well, both of us here are not experts in the cutting edge of like particle physics, right? No. So we don't know all that there is. We're discovering more things every day. Physics is apart from this um, this, this this discussion here. Conveniently, eh? Oh, it can be if you want it to be. Well, why not? Well, we can bring it in. But what I'm saying is, we can have this discussion without having a cosmological inference. That's how that's how deep it is. This is almost as if it's a mathematical discussion. Well, why not? In, be, why not be all inclusive? We can if you want it. I would prefer. It makes more sense. So, but we, we have already, from first principles, agreed that there, it makes sense from this ontological on this ontological level. I haven't agreed. The universe could have always existed. I've said nothing about the universe always okay, existing or not. come on, you're being, some, being pedantic. Let's go with that. If, we've but talked about ontology. Existence could have always existed. No problem. It doesn't need to have a start. Do you believe that the universe always existed? I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea. Look, no idea at all. You, you're a clever man, right? Who knows? You are. You've completed a degree in biology and you're a clever man. Maybe we've made an ontological argument. It's been done now. We know there must be a necessary existence. If you say the universe always existed, yeah, which we don't agree with, right? We, who's we? Let's say, for instance, the theistic position, or for, to be more specific, Muslims. We believe that the universe had an explicit beginning and that God created the universe ex nihilo, which means from nothing. Yeah. Right. However, let's go with the fact that, for the sake of argument, no problem. I mean, uh, today I want to, you know, you know what I'm trying to say? I want to give it to you. Let's go with it. The universe always existed. There's much bigger problems coming has, your way. Has time always existed? Who knows? 
Who knows? If the universe always existed, and my question to you is, has it existed with time or not no time? What? Well, is I there time I now? Be, I don't want to be, what's the right word? Picking on semantics, but what do we mean by time? Time it refers to, uh, to tenses and action. So we refer to past, present and future. Mm. We refer to a unit of measurement, yes, which, ba which measures this transition from past to present, present to future and so on. That's what we mean by time. Yeah. So do you believe in this? I don't think I can say I believe in it. Do you believe time exists? I don't like the word belief. Do you accept time exists? Uh, I live my life that it does exist, in the view that it does. All right, so, so I can't say definitely. Epistemically, you accept the, the value of time. Well, you could live without a concept of time, I suppose. Just be more difficult. No, is there time? I don't know, mate. That's the thing. I'm, I no, don't but, know. I'm but, an honest man. No, William, please. I you mean, exist. <laughs> <laughs> that's a deeper one. William, Yeah. that's fine. So if you don't know much about cosmology, which is your position, it's better to go back to ontology because then we'll get more certain truth. I don't think we can get certain truth. That's my that's my stance, man. Is that your is that I your think stance? Well, yeah, we should go into the we should go into the depth of it. Like a theistic position is is quite an interesting one, rather than a god that maybe just created. If I say I exist, no, forget about I existence. There is existence. Is that a undeniable statement or not? Oof, well, we could say that it is. Yes. Okay. So there are some things. So that is an undeniable position. Something, something exists. Something exists. Something. Yeah. yeah, fine. There is no doubt that there is existence. Something exists. So the reason why I've taken you out of cosmological uh, discussion is because I know you're always going to say I don't know. Well, that's that's the honest position. No man. problem. So in that case, let's go away from doubt into certainty. Because no, seriously. Because if sure. but this is I'll be honest with you, right? The Quran says. If it's so obvious, then why doesn't everyone believe it? Well, because they've been socialized otherwise. Let me tell you something, right? The Quran says, I'm I don't know Arabic. I'll tell you the answer. I'll tell you what the translation, right? It says, did they create themselves or were they themselves the creators? Were they created from nothing or were they themselves the creators of themselves? Did they create the universe? They have no certainty. So in other words, the Quranic position is that an atheist or even agnost by definition will never attain certainty that's that is a position right it's You're, not a problem it's a big problem because right. I'll, tell, I'll tell you why it's a problem from your perspective it's less of a problem because you're kind of like agnostic right well i've been saying i don't know yeah. so but yeah. for, for an atheist who who makes a definite claim that there is no god yeah. it's a problem to make a positive definite claim but actually when it comes to the nitty-gritty have very little certainty. Do you see the, po the point here? No, I, I already know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's you agree, fine for me. So you agree with me and you agree with the Quran. All right, so that's, that's not say, Saying there, you're sure there's no God is a difficult position, just like saying you're sure there is one is a difficult I don't position. think it's a difficult position because uh, me and you just went through the process. Well, and if, if we mean God by some force outside of <laughs> physical creation, but who knows what that is. We haven't used the, well, I, I, I haven't group, said, I haven't said any, argument. true. I have not said anything about force. I've not used that word. I've not said anything about that book. These are your words. Sure. That's an easier relevant, argument. To, I'll, I'll be honest with you, William. It's an easier argument to refute. But let me just summarize what I said to you before, okay? And just I'm putting it in propositional ter terms. Statement form. Yeah. I'll, I'll ask you some questions too. No problem. Statement one, I said, it, there is no doubt there is existence. Statement one. Statement two, existence is divided into necessary and possible. Necessary means that this existence depends upon nothing in order for it to exist. Possible means it depends upon something else for its existence and it could have otherwise not existed. Necessary means if you take it out of existence, impossibilities will occur. Possible means if you take it out of existence, impossibilities will not occur. In other words, if I take you out of existence or you take me out of existence, no impossibility, no logical impossibility will occur. Therefore, we said if, if there's a series of things which are only possible existences, we will need something outside of that series which is a necessary existence in order for existence to exist. Therefore, necessary existence is by definition necessary. Therefore, there must be something which everything depends upon and it depends upon nothing. Also, that thing has to be one because if there were two necessary existences, there would be two things which necessarily claim to have nothing it depends upon. One of them would have to depend upon the other. And in addition to that, it will have to be unique. If that's the case, then actually what we're saying is that there's one necessary existence, which everything depends upon and it depends upon nothing. And 
existence would not be justified without that necessary existence. An impossibility would occur without that existence. Therefore, no, no, no. <laughs> therefore, 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 there is, as the Quran says, "Qul Allahu Ahad." Says Allah, one and only, the one. Allah Samad, the eternally besought of all, the independent, the thing that everything depends upon, and He depends upon nothing. Lam yalid wa lam yurid. He does not have. He's not a child of anyone, nor is he. Yeah, Does he give a And there's nothing like him at all. It's unique. Okay. The thing, the parameters that the, the Quranic discourse puts forward are not only immediately realized, could be argued from an intuitive perspective, but also, right, logically attained through discursive explication of ontological epistemo uh, ontological argumentation like i've just done right here we don't even so, need to go into cosmology let's talk about that so let's say uh, consciousness right yes we have no idea what consciousness is that's nothing to do with the argument right is it is yes it consciousness well, is very it's very interesting keep, i'm going to keep talking because i think it's interesting okay go so ahead go ahead let's say let's say this consciousness that yeah. we apparently view the world through right we don't know where it comes from we haven't discovered that in science maybe we won't Who's to say that that force right there is not God itself? Yeah, okay, so we, we say that, that God is. Why not? We say that the things... Because God is a semantic term that comes from the German word gut. It's a, it's, 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 it has connotations, especially for an atheist. He doesn't like the word. So look, don't talk to me about God, right? That's why I'm saying, let's just say the thing that we've just discussed here. Or maybe the, with the parameters. Experiencing itself. We're saying that you have two things here. Number one, you have this reality, which is a, which is the ontological basis for God's existence. Yeah. Then you can say something else. If you believe in causation, you can make the Ghazali argument, which is that everything that begins to exist has a cause. Yes. The universe right. began to exist, therefore the universe has a cause. Right. If, of course, you don't believe the universe began to exist, then you don't need to say that this this argument doesn't apply to you, but we don't need the argument. Okay. Yeah. Okay, can we... Uh, it's, it's a nice uh, spiel. <laughs> right. Um, so, let's let's take it further. Um, so, let's say all these things are, are right. Yes. Um, where do we go from there? We go from there. We ask, okay, we ask the question, why now? Because what does the necessary existence, what does this samad, if you like, the thing that everything depends upon, and it depends upon nothing, what does it want from us? That's an interesting question. Right. Why would it have wants? Okay, why did it put us into existence? That's the question. Ah, uh, and this is a logical I've heard, question. I've heard, the, I've heard the answer and I find it exceptionally dissatisfying. Okay, tell me why, what is the answer? To worship it. Okay, tell me why is that, uh, this is, this is, what, what is worship? What, what do, uh, that's my question. Right. What is worship? That's a great thing. Let it, me answer the question. Tell me. Worship is submission of will. Ah, submission. Yes. Interesting. Yeah, it literally means that you voluntarily submit your will to the necessary existence. It's really what worship is. Let me tell you what worship is. Is it right? asking for our life and energy? Is no, no, no. Let me, let me tell you exactly like what worship is, all right? No. Worshipping is realizing who you are. That's all it is. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's all it is to worship God is to realize that you are you're a dependent. Ah, so we don't have any real power. Absolutely. That huh. every, all of your power is ceded to you from the necessary existence. Your existence is, is as a result